Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today I want to talk about how short sellers are finally being charged. You may have noticed over the last few days the SEC has really ramped up its investigations into short sellers and today I want to talk about why. So stay tuned and let's make some money. And now I want to dive straight in with the key information. So, Unusual Wells tweeted the other day saying just in, the SEC is investigating Goldman Sachs over its ESG funds, per the Wall Street Journal. Now you may remember from my video last week, Citadel also has its own ESG funds, which it uses to retain employees or ex-employees and to continue to pay those ex-employees, regardless of what company they're now working for. Many ex-Citadel employees have now gone on to work for the Boston Consulting Group, for the SEC, for FINRA, and for major accounting firms like PwC and many others. These employees while working at Citadel were entered into these ESG funds, which enables them to continue being paid even after their employment finishes, even after they start new employments, even at the SEC. Peter Han actually replied to this saying the SEC is finally getting closer to who I really want. And from Lou's reply, it suggests that Peter Han really wants Ken Griffin from Citadel. But this isn't the only investigation the SEC has sparked into short sellers or sparked into ESG funds. Edward Burchuk just tweeted saying Credit Suisse failed to report their short sales for seven plus years from February 2015 through to April 2022. That means the SEC had been investigating Credit Suisse's short sales sometime after April 2022, likely back in May. The SEC found that from February 2015 through to April 2022, Credit Suisse also failed to establish and maintain a supervisory system, including written supervisory procedures reasonably designed to comply with FINRA rules regarding trade reporting of short sales in violation of FINRA Rule 3110 and 2010. Or actually, this matter resulted from FINRA's Department of Market Regulations review of Credit Suisse's short sale trade reporting activity. And this is because Credit Suisse failed to submit short sale indicators to the trade reporting facility and the over-the-counter reporting facility as well. And on top of that, Vice Asset Management has also settled with the SEC for $6.9 million. It says the Boston-based hedge fund manager was charged with violating short sale rules in seven public offerings. It says Vice Asset Management, a Boston-based hedge fund manager, has agreed to pay approximately $6.9 million to settle SEC charges that it violated the federal securities laws when it unlawfully purchased stock in seven public offerings after selling short those same stocks. And interestingly, it says the SEC charged that between December 2020 and February 2021, which is a very interesting timing because right in the middle here was the January 2021 run-up. It says that Vice violated Rule 105, which prohibits short selling an equity security during a restricted period. And it says, according to the order, Vice Asset Management's violations occurred because it repeatedly miscalculated the restricted period and dismissed several red flags raised by its internal controls that suggested possible rule violations. Now, obviously, so far, these fines have been fairly small and they seem to be targeting smaller hedge funds and also large banks like Credit Suisse and Goldman Sachs. But I do think it is definitely a move in the right direction. The SEC now seems to not be scared of investigating these short sellers, including large funds or large institutions like Credit Suisse. I think the SEC now realise that there is a lot of criminal activity happening in the short selling area of the market or with those short sellers and therefore they've ramped up their investigations. I think it's now only a matter of time until they realise just how much illegal nefarious shorting is going on with AMC and GameStop and also discover which funds are behind the attacks. And guys, right now you can currently get 10 free stocks on Moomoo if you sign up using the link in the description below. These free stocks are worth up to $2,500 each, so that's a total of up to $25,000 in free stocks and a free share of Lucid on top of that. Moomoo has also updated its customer agreement to state that it does not accept payment for order flow. Moomoo and Futu do not clear their trades through clearing houses such as Apex Clearing, and they don't sell their order flow to hedge funds like Citadel. Moomoo's trades are cleared through its own clearing broker, Futu Incorporated. Now, I also wanted to talk about the current market crash, the coming recession, and also the FOMC meeting, which is happening later today. Zero Hedge tweeted saying that Coinbase is officially just about to cut 18% of jobs, and they've cited the economic downturn as the reason for the job cuts. 
We're also seeing the crypto platform BlockFi also reducing its workforce by around 20%, a very similar percentage to Coinbase. Now this means that big companies like Coinbase and BlockFi are already starting to let go of employees and people are already starting to lose their jobs. Now you may say, Tom, the crypto market is crashing and that's why only Coinbase and BlockFi are letting their staff go, right? But Zero Hedge has also tweeted saying that Compass, the real estate broker, is about to cut 10% of its workforce amid a US housing slowdown. And on top of that, not only Compass, but also Redfin, an online real estate broker, is also about to cut 8% of its employees immediately. And that means that it's not just in the high tech cryptocurrency blockchain space that's cutting employees, but even property firms and real estate brokers are also cutting employees as well immediately. Clearly they recognize there is a current US housing market slowdown and they realize the economy is just about to enter a recession. And therefore many companies across the board are already starting to cut employees and people are already starting to lose their jobs. If this isn't a clear sign of recession that major companies, not just in the cryptocurrency and blockchain space, are starting to cut 10 to 20% of their workforce immediately, then I don't know what is. And after another red day yesterday, Zero Hedge has also tweeted saying, according to the latest Bank of America fund manager survey, the mood on Wall Street today was do not walk next to tall buildings. Clearly many hedge fund employees and hedge fund managers are overly worried about the current stock market, even to the point that they could potentially be jumping from tall buildings and therefore they're advising people not to walk next to them. I think that is very, very worrying that people on Wall Street are already debating committing such acts, but at the same time, it kind of doesn't surprise me due to just how fast the market has been crashing. Now at the last FOMC meeting, the Fed pushed rates by 50 basis points. Up until a few days ago, the general consensus was that this time the Fed would raise by 75 basis points. But now the markets are beginning to brace for a 100 basis point Fed rate hike as inflation roars to new highs. In the last FOMC meeting, Jerome Powell was saying that a 75 basis point rate hike was out of the question and not going to happen. But now, not only are they likely to boost rates by 75 basis points, but potentially even by 100. Fox Business says that some Wall Street traders are betting that the Federal Reserve will take the most aggressive step in decades as it races to catch up with soaring hot inflation. They've said it marks the fastest pace of inflation since December 1981. This says the dismal report prompted some banks, including Barclays and Jefferies, to revise their expectations for the Fed meeting this week, which concludes on Wednesday. They've said the strategists now expect central bankers to approve a 75 basis point hike or even a 100 basis point hike as they try to project confidence to the markets. They also said policymakers have not approved a 100 basis point increase since Paul Volcker led the central bank and ran an aggressive inflation crushing campaign in the early 1980s, which obviously was followed by a giant stock market crash. Mac 10 has also made a concrete prediction on when he thinks the Fed will capitulate and just how far he thinks the S&P 500 will end up falling. He thinks when the S&P 500 is down by 40% and the VIX spikes to 100, he says the Fed will turn neutral. And when the S&P falls by a total of 60% and the VIX spikes to 200, he thinks the Fed will panic. On a chart, he's expecting the S&P 500 to fall to around 2,900 or to around 3,000, recover slightly, but then fall further, even potentially below 2,000 points, way below these 2020 lows and also the 2019 lows as well. And finally, I also wanted to give you a word of advice or maybe even a warning, courtesy from me, Kevin. Over the last few days and the last few weeks, we've seen some crazy things happening in the cryptocurrency space. We've seen Celsius closing down and restricting withdrawals. We've seen UST and Luna absolutely collapsing. We've also seen BlockFi and Coinbase cutting headcount by around 20%. And now Coinbase are beginning to restrict withdrawals. Kevin said Coinbase is now requiring withdrawals to go on a whitelist addressed with a 48 hour delay to add. He said the reason is enhanced security. And he said, mm hmm, how's that liquidity holding up? 
Coinbase are requiring users to provide additional verification and additional ID verification, and they're also whitelisting these withdrawals with a 48 hour delay. Clearly they're hoping to scare people off from withdrawing their crypto as they have to provide more ID verification, and they're also trying to delay withdrawals as well. We're seeing more and more and more cryptocurrency platforms being compromised and really starting to struggle with liquidity. And therefore I do think it's worthwhile either taking your crypto completely off exchange or even going back to being cash based and not investing in crypto for the meantime during the current crypto bear market. But guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. Also, be sure to ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.